Peace and welcome to the curriculum, Home Remedies to Stay Woke. This is lesson video for week two, and we're gonna call this lesson, How We Got Woke. So week one's lesson looked at this word conscious. We gave it a definition according to the curriculum. You should go check that out if you haven't. But in short, we looked at how the universe has different laws, cause and effect, birth, death, seasons, things that we can predict. And once we become aware of these laws, it affects how we move in the world. I use that to arrive at a definition that consciousness is when we become responsible for the predictable outcomes of our actions, any action. It doesn't just affect what happens here, but it affects what happens somewhere else. Things that happen now will affect what happens somewhere in the future. You get it? Now, if you find these videos to be helpful or if that it could be helpful for anyone else, please hit the like button and subscribe. Now, today I promised we're going to talk about this word woke. Having watched the lyric video for Shepherds, the assigned reading for week two, you already know that it deals with this idea of how the label woke came into existence, making it on popular TV, film, music, and even the title of this course. Hmm. But how did this happen? And now that we've described conscious, what is woke actually describing? Now in a very short amount of time, I'm gonna do my best to shed light on all these areas of woke. Now realizing by definition, this is still a slang term. And like most slang terms, why it catches on in the culture is not always clear. But in this case, some facts are on the surface for everyone to see. Let's take a look at them. The word woke gained popularity somewhere around the midpoint of the last decade via social media, and particularly Twitter with the hashtag stay woke. And it emerged from out of black culture, specifically the dialect of African-American vernacular, how black folks talk. Where at times the proper usage of the word would have been awake, black dialect may say woke. As in, nah, when you called me, I was already woke. It was even more popularized by Childish Gambino's 2016 hit, Redbone. In addition to the song being used at the beginning of the 2017 hit movie, Get Out, the phrase stay woke was beginning to capture a certain sentiment of social awareness within the culture. But was this new slang? No. As early as 1962, an article by William Melvin Kelly in the New York Times entitled, If you're woke, you dig it. No Mickey Mouse can be expected to follow today's Negro idiom without a hip assist, points toward one of the first public uses of the word. And even in 1942, the first edition of the Negro Digest magazine, later known as Ebony Magazine, reportedly used the word woke when writer Jay Saunders Redding was discussing the matter of labor unions. But perhaps its first recorded instance of use in association with music can be found on archive recordings of the blues and folk musician Leadbelly. On the Smithsonian Folkways collection, most likely during the mid 40s, after singing his song, Scottsboro Boys, about a historic miscarriage of justice in which nine black youth were falsely accused of raping a white woman, he closes in his interview by saying the following. But anyhow, they put the boys in jail and it's been that six long years, brother. So I made this little song about down there. So I, I advise everybody to be a little careful when they go along through that, but stay woke, keep the eyes open. Now fast forwarding all the way to the early 2000s, it was on Erykah Badu's 2008 release, New America Part 1, that we first most notably heard the phrase, I stay woke. On Erykah's song, Master Teacher, a collaboration with Georgia Ann Muldrow, the two artists reintroduced the word woke into the modern era by way of popular black music. I stay woke. And most accurately, we might need to credit Georgia Ann for the creation of the lyric and use of the phrase in the song. Keep that in mind, we'll come back to it. <clears throat> wait, 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 hang on. Can somebody please hit the lights real quick? One quick thing for those of you taking notes. Please recognize that at the curriculum, all references and sources have links in the description below. All right, now back to this history lesson. And so the 2008 song Master Teacher is credited with introducing the phrase stay woke to popular culture using the word in the same cultural context as William Kelly and Leadbelly did. So with the killing of Trayvon Martin in 2012 and the acquittal of his shooter George Zimmerman the following year, coupled with the Black Lives Matter movement by 2013, the 2014 fatal police shooting of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, and the subsequent uprising, we start to see the phrase become a hashtag with regards to social movement and the rising awareness of social injustices within the culture. Now being woke or awake as a figure of speech to describe consciousness was not new. 
41 years before Childish Gambino's song Redbone, another hit song highlighted the idea of consciousness being akin to being awake. Wake up, everybody, no more sleeping. Teddy Pendergrass sang Wake Up Everybody for Harold Melvin in the Blue Notes in 1975, calling for a rise in social consciousness and awareness for all people. And that song comes on the heels of what would have been one of the most socially conscious and motivated periods in American history. Social awareness coming right out of the 60s. Ten years before that, Martin Luther King Jr. delivered a commencement address at Oberlin College. The title of his commencement address was Remaining Awake Through the Great Revolution, in which he stated that the great challenge facing every individual graduating today is to remain awake through this social revolution. We can take it a little further. Around the 1920s, the political movement promoting self-reliance, racial pride, economic power, and international unity among people of African descent was led by Marcus Garvey and the Universal Negro Improvement Association. During this time, he's noted as proclaiming, calling the charge to, quote, wake up Ethiopia, wake up Africa. Let us work towards one glorious end of a free, redeemed, and mighty nation. So you get it. This charge for social consciousness within the minds of black people has practically always been used synonymously with being awake. And by 1988, Spike Lee with his film School Days famously ends with the phrase, Wake up! As Lawrence Fishburne and the cast break the fourth wall, urging the audience to Please wake up. And this happens in 1988, right alongside of the emergence of another cultural black movement, hip hop. And with this, we must acknowledge how, as a product of the black American struggle, there was a space within hip hop culture that was always socially conscious. In fact, what we know today as popular culture, which is actually hip hop culture, has much of black culture, and particularly conscious hip hop, to thank for its present day wokeness, and not just the word woke but let's save some of that for a later class. For now, just know that through hip hop culture comes Erica Badu and Georgia Ann Muldrow's master teacher in 2008. And by 2016, we're bumping to the song Redbone and singing along to it like we know what it is. And we do, kind of. Wokeness is showing up the same way we saw it in other social movements. This knowledge of social issues, involvement in social movements, and there's a celebration of somebody showing that they're becoming more knowledgeable about social issues. And it spikes in 2020. I mean, we see the whole world become passionate about social issues. And this all seemingly is occurring because of some new awareness we have of our interconnectedness. So the prompt from week two asked you to remember one thing that changed how you saw the world. And hopefully you came up with at least one thing. And within this is you probably becoming conscious or aware, or maybe even woke to something. But this prompt is layered with two secrets. One, the world as we know it may not be the way it really is, at least not the way it is for everyone. That we're only conscious or woke to the extent that our perception allows us to be. And if you listen to the song Shepherds or The Bridge, you hear a line from Erica Badu stating, this world done changed since I've been conscious. Now the world may have not really changed, but to her, it has. So new information can change our perspective, which then gives us the recipe to become conscious. However, having knowledge alone does not make someone woke. The challenge is to keep it going. And here's the little known fact. When asked about her lyric from the song Master Teacher, Georgia Ann Muldrow revealed that she wasn't singing, I stay woke, but I'd stay woke. She states in an interview, I never saw myself as woke. I saw myself as aspiring for woke. And therein lies the rub. To stay woke, you have gotta know who the master teachers are. So where they at? We'll deal with that next lesson. If you appreciated this information, hit the like and subscribe. I'm Uncle Baye, onward and upward.